What's going on everyone, Austin John Please here, and today I'm going to be going over the easiest alpha Pokemon to shiny hunt. In Pokemon Legends Arceus, there are many strategies for you to find a shiny alpha Pokemon. However, it seems to be the most common one right now is just creating a route, going over an entire map, looking at all the placed alphas. By doing that, you're seeing if the current advance of that seed is going to contain a shiny Pokemon based on your current criteria, and then just rezoning to reseed every single time so you get a new advance and the chance that that advance is going to be a shiny. By doing that, you are going to be seeing a whole bunch of Pokemon, but it's a very long process and it requires some thought to actually come up with the route. But if you just wanted to have at least one, at least one shiny alpha Pokemon, which there are a lot of people who don't, and you may want to do a hunt, this is actually going to be a very fast and straightforward way for you to shiny hunt a few alpha Pokemon. And the basis of how this works is really pretty simple. All you need to do is just enter a cave. That's that's pretty much it. It's gonna be a pretty straightforward video here. So if I'm here in the Coronet Highlands, and if I were to make my way to the Wayward Cave at the north entrance, this location is going to be its own separate zone. Meaning that if you're going to not enter this at any point going through the map, this area is never going to load. So only once you hit A to go inside of here is this zone then going to be loaded and therefore all the Pokemon inside are going to be assigned to their own seed. If you're not familiar, a seed is a very long string of numbers of exactly how Pokemon are going to be spawning in and then your shiny rate is applied to each individual Pokemon in that. The individual Pokemon that spawn one at a time are called advances. If you're if you want to learn more about this, I did put out a video going over all this. While I don't know if this strategy is, you know, a real strategy or a method or anything else like that, since it's pretty much just soft resetting now knowing how the game works, my friend Majin Phil actually reached out to me about this. And he asked me to work with him on making this video. Absolutely no problem. You turn off auto saves outside of the cave and then, excuse me, excuse me, I would like to enter. Why can I not enter if Golduck is there? Thank you. I'm going to enter. Inside of the Wayward Cave, which by the way, I'm lightening up the footage just in case it's a little dark, there's going to be several Pokemon that spawn in here. First, when you walk in in the Grand Corridor area, you're going to be seeing Golbat and Golbat. They could also be Zubat. In the pond, you're going to be finding Whishcash and... These are two separate spawners of Pokemon that have their own chance to spawn whatever Pokemon that they want. In addition, these stones here have a chance that they're going to be having a Gibble in them. And if you head down this corridor, as we saw in Alpha Hunters, there's going to be a Crobat. In addition, there's a Wishcash chilling out over here, right? This Golbat is predetermined from the time that you walk into the cave. That means that every time that you enter the cave, there's going to be the same Golbat. If I were to leave right now and then come back in, that's going to be the exact same Golbat. Same stats, same shiny status, all the information about that Golbat is going to remain exactly the same. In addition, there's a few other Pokemon in here, like I believe there's a Zubat and a Gibble hanging out in this little pocket. So there's actually several Pokemon that you could be finding in here. And Majin Phil first observed this by going in here, and when he was going through, he saw the Crobat here, he realized that it's a female, and every subsequent time that he would walk out and walk back in, it would remain exactly the same. He decided to then walk out, go back to Jubilife, come back, and save outside of the cave. By doing that, he was able to reset from that exact one point before ever entering the cave, and notice that the Alpha Crobat had its gender as different. Okay, female crowbat. Let's just see if we let's just see if it's male next time. It's male! Oh my god! Different crowbat! That's a different crowbat! So that would infer that it's going to be two unique Pokemon. After subsequent catching, testing, and comparing stats, it confirmed that they are unique crowbats every single time that you do this. What that actually means is the first time you walk into this cave, it's going to be a brand new seed that's generated every single time. And the same way that people like to shiny hunt for an alpha in the overworld by just going over everything, leaving and coming back, you're generating a new seed for each of those Pokemon. Likewise, by doing a soft reset in front of this cave, you're achieving the same results. Turn the game off, turn it back on, let's go back inside. The major difference is that 
you're only going to have to do the reset to go back to the home screen, which the reset in this game is not very long at all, especially compared to BDSP, and that you only have a sample size of one guaranteed alpha. Granted, the Zubat and Golbat that are hanging out in here, they have a chance to be alpha. But in addition to that, every single time that you walk in, all of the Pokemon in here do have a chance to be just a natural 100% full odd shiny. As I come down here, I have a Golbat and a Golbat, but as you notice here, my Tumblestone is shaking. So that means that I'm gonna be having a little old Gibble hanging out inside of here. Yes, I am. Isn't that neat? My first time coming here, that Gibble was not there. Absolutely not. And coming down the hallway, once again, we have our Crobat. So by doing this, and I'm not going over the exact tables, I'm just going over what I observed just now, you are going to be having the two flying Pokemon in the main room, you're going to be having the two water-based Pokemon in the main room, you are going to be having the Zubat and Gibble in that side room, you are going to be having the chance of the Tumblestone shaking, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Pokemon that all have a chance at a shiny odd, in addition to the Alpha Crobat. So you're checking eight Pokemon every single time that you zone in and zone out of here. It's also been said that if you go inside of this area, the gibble that spawns in on the right, you're gonna be able to just hear it as soon as you walk in, so you may not actually even have to go over there to see if it's going to be a shiny. Use the, the word ear to get up there. Oh my God, look at that! Look at that, chat! Are you kidding me? I've told you it works. Yes! Science! The science! compared to the other ways that you could possibly get an Alpha Crobat, which include the Alpha Golbat in the field lands at nighttime, but he's nowhere near a fast travel point. Granted, if it's on your route, that also includes the Blissey and the Magikarp and the Heracross, then cool. But this is going to be very fast, very direct, and you are going to be running your odds of getting this. Now, do keep in mind that if you have the Pokedex page perfected, that's gonna be much faster. Come in here, catch three of the Alphas by zoning to Jubilife every time, and then go to the Ice Lands and catch five of them in the air. They're not that difficult. The most time consuming part is doing 70 agile moves between Cross Poison and Leech Life. That's gonna be a lot of Shinxes that are gonna be sacrificing themselves on the Obsidian Field Lands. So, thank you for your service, Shinxes. Now, while this method is cool and all, maybe you don't want a Crobat. Fully understandable. There is another Pokemon that's going to be the only Alpha Pokemon of its type, guaranteed that you can hunt doing this method. Here in the Alabaster Ice Lands, we do have another cave spawn. Which, by the way, when it comes to all the caves between all the regions, you kind of have a really limited amount. These are often referred to as sub-areas or sub-regions. And the Snow Point Temple is a sub-region, as well as Lake Acuity's Acuity Cavern, but that doesn't have any Pokemon that randomly spawn in there. When it comes to the Callboat Coastlands, you don't have any wild Pokemon in the Turnback Cave or in the Lava Dome. Seaside Hollow, you do have the 98% chance at Octillery, 2% chance at Fioni. The Fioni is shiny locked and the Octillery are not going to be a guaranteed alpha, so that's kind of a you know, not great hunt considering that Alpha Octillery is right here at the Castaway Shore. The Crimson Mirelands only has one sub area, the Valor Cavern, which has no spawns. The Obsidian Fieldlands only has the Verity Cavern, which has no spawns. The Coronet Highlands has the Stone Portal, which has no spawns, and the Wayward Cave, which we have discussed. The small piece of the thing, the quarry underneath here, even though that feels like a sub area, it's not because you're not actually leaving the map. Same thing can be said for the holes that appear over here at like the avalanche slopes. But let's turn our attention over here to the Snowpoint Temple. The Snowpoint Temple has a bunch of Pokemon that are in there. However, one of them is a placed alpha, and that's going to be for Gallade. There is a Gardevoir Alpha that's going to be existing here at Hearts Crag during the daytime, but there is no placed Alpha Ralts or Curlia. So because of that, this is the only place you are gonna be able to find yourself a guaranteed Alpha Gallade. The only problem is, almost near the end of the labyrinth, if you go in through the bottom, however, Majin Phil, in his stream, he had someone by the name of Charles, who found or came up with a strategy. I don't know if this has been seen anywhere else. And to be honest, I haven't done too much research into there because this is pretty much the only use case for this. I doubt speedrunners would have any use for it, but you have a way of actually gaining altitude with Braviary. 
as Phil is going to be demonstrating here, by doing a certain sequence of events, you are going to be able to increase the height of Braviary. If you press plus to whip out Braviary, and then you do the I'm going down animation by holding Y, you actually gain a little bit of height. So you're going to be holding Y for about half a second. You release Y at the same time that you're going to be pressing plus, which is going to be recalling Braviary. And then in the air, you have the prompt for A to bring Braviary back out. So by holding Y, pressing plus, and then pressing A, you are going to be gaining altitude using the downward animation. It's going to take a little bit to actually get a hold of it, but if you're doing it right, you're actually not going to be moving at all. If you're moving, that means you're holding Y for too long. I'm not actually able to talk while I do it, so I'm just going to do it. So I like to hold my controller like this, and then my other hand's thumb is going to be on the plus. This might be a little hard on a Joy-Con. And just like that, you could get on top Snowpoint Temple. And as we've discussed before, if you were to enter through the bottom and come up here, the Pokemon inside of here would be permanently generated. But instead, if you save up here and head down the stairs, you are going to be able to hear the sounds of all the Pokemon in the area. Now, I specifically don't know how the range works for the notification for shiny Pokemon. Whether it's from the player, if there's a sphere, meaning that if the sphere is here, even though that this would meet the Y and X coordinates, I don't know if this Pokemon would be notified to you or if it's going to work more like a cylindrical prism. That way you're, you're going to have your round radius around the player, but the Z axis is going to be infinite. I think it's more that that way, if you're flying with Braviary above something and it's very low below you, you'll still hear the sound of that Pokemon as it spawns in. After you've done the Regigigas portion of the game, then you're guaranteed that if you walk in here and you hear a shiny sound, you are going to be able to find that shiny Pokemon. So for the shiny Gallade hunt, all you're gonna do is just save in front of this entrance after doing that pain in the butt braviary method, and then you're gonna head inside. Now I'm just gonna cut to Phil's footage because after a very long night up until eight o'clock in the morning, having not slept between that period of time, you can see how sleepy my friend is. It's okay, Phil, you're about to get real excited, real energetic. He goes downstairs, hears the sound, and he finds himself a shiny alpha Gallade. And that's a good shiny, too. Oh, oh yes, yes, yes! Oh, <laughs> oh, dude, oh my god! Oh, yes! I gotta encounter it. Oh, wow, that's sick. If you're on top of here, you can use Braviary, and you can just climb up on top of here, which is a great way... What? <laughs> what? What's what's going on? Is is that is that Braviary okay? Normally it it flies in a big old circle, but I I can't explain that. I can't explain what's going on right there. If I don't catch him, oh, I did catch him. If I didn't catch him, I want to know if he would actually start the cycle back up. Also, weird part, you can just walk up here, right? And then you can fly on top of here. And I feel like this is the place that something should be. There's not a wisp. There's not treasure. There's not one small little Easter egg. There's not something painted right in the middle. What's the point of being up here? Oh, it spawned back in. It spawned back, you saw it spawn back in, right? That was really weird. There you go. That's how you're going to be able to find two specific alpha Pokemon to shiny hunt. That's not going to require you to do an entire route going through an entire place. Pros and cons. Con is only one different alpha Pokemon. Pro, significantly faster if you want to hunt one of these two specifically. Because you know what? I'm starting to get a little FOMO that I myself don't have a shiny alpha. I have like 30 full odd shinies. I have 20 that I've hunted for. No alphas. Maybe just my luck of the cards. So again, I don't really know if all of these specific methods and findings have been posted anywhere else, but Majafil, 
good friend of mine, not family friendly, but an entertaining streamer, does some fun challenges. If you want to follow him while he does these hunts and do some fun group testing and things like that, definitely go drop him a follow on twitch.tv slash Majin Phil. Great guy. Anyways, guys, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor, hit the thumbs up button down below. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.